All right. The title of my project was called Caring for the Caregiver, and it was in partnership with Big Sky Senior Services. Here is the presentation outline. As you can see, we're going to go over some literature, the purpose of the project, the objectives, the alignment with the Rocky Mountain College OTD mission and core values, uh, the project description, summary of process, description of outcome measures, the summary of those outcome measures, uh, the sustainability, what I've learned, next steps, references, questions, and lastly, acknowledgements. A quick overview of the literature. So studies have shown that early detection and appropriate um, and appropriate intervention support from others in similar situations and learn skills to manage stress and depression could be useful in reducing and preventing caregiver burnout. A support group provides opportunities for people to share personal experiences and feelings, coping strategies, um, or firsthand information about the disease or treatments. Caregivers may find themselves with so many responsibilities that they neglect taking care of themselves. Staying physically and emotionally strong is the best thing a caregiver can do for the person they're caring for. And finally, attending caregiver support group meetings is known to relieve tension and reduce the threat of becoming overwhelmed. Um, so the purpose of this project, as we just saw, the literature supports the need for a caregiver support group. Many of the current interventions aim to enhance caregivers' ability to manage the behavioral issues or the deteriorations in functioning of dementia patients. However, there is a deficit of interventions that address the overall well-being of the caregiver. There has been no literature that specifically addresses how OT-led support groups could benefit caregiver wellness. Occupational therapists have the necessary training that could guide them in effect effectively assisting in the development of occupation-based support groups. Um, and to provide just some um, kind of reference to how many caregivers there are, there is over 11 million Americans who provide unpaid care for people with Alzheimer's or dementias. So there's a lot of caregivers out there. Here are my objectives. So um, I developed an occupation-based support group for caregivers with Big Sky Senior Services. I presented the occupation-based support group for caregivers to key stakeholders within the community. Then I also presented a, a sustainability plan to Big Sky Senior Services that was based on the evaluative data obtained from the results of the pre and post surveys that the key stakeholders completed. How this aligns with Rocky Mountain College's OTD mission and core values. Pro it promoted lifelong learning by having education sprinkled throughout. Um, the reader was constantly educated on ways they could help the caregiver and even just knowledge about the disease itself. Um, we really embraced community engagement here. This was all about the community and also diversity was just other denominations of churches coming into play here. And then this advocated for the value of occupation-based service delivery as the entire group was obviously occupation-based, but also just the education of what even OT is for people who are unaware of it. Project description. So the support group manual provides support, education, and training to help the caregivers be the best caregiver for their loved one while learning, a, while learning about and utilizing tools for self-care. There is 16 sections in the manual and they cover a variety of topics such as community resources, virtual resources, education, health and wellness, um, way to seek respite, guest speakers, and even ideas to make the church more dementia friendly. The topics were all researched through credible sources. The support group manual can be accessed either through the printed version or a PDF version. Um, and then the manual was designed for everyone to use. It's easy to, it's easy to read and provides resources for additional education. The support group manual also has an introduction section that teaches you how to run a support group. Um, and the sections can be used as a standalone education guide or an all-inclusive year-long support group. Each session was designed to be about 60 minutes long, including 30 minutes for education and 30 minutes for general sharing. Each section incorporates conversation starters to assist the group leaders in guiding conversations of their groups if needed. And then the sections even have opportunities for group members to either take something home or time to reflect. The summary of my process, sorry about that, I don't know what happened. Um, so the first two weeks I reviewed and updated my objectives. I met with the community stakeholders and completed a needs assessment. And then I began attending educational opportunities uh, via online courses to further my knowledge of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Weeks three through 10, I also continued the opportunities to learn about educate or to learn about um, Alzheimer's and dementia, as well as the community resources. I then worked with additional programs at Big Sky Senior Services, such as Dementia Friendly Billings and the Memory Cafe. And then I, this is when I really dove in and created the support group manual. Um, there was a lots of iterations of it, lots of editing. 
And then week 11 is finally when um, I was able to complete all the final edits of my reviewers and then reviewed the manual prior to printing to make sure it was ready to go. Week 12, I printed and binded the manual. And then weeks 13 through 14, I worked on presentations, so sustainability plan, the outcome measures, analyzed data for that. Um, I presented to the community stakeholders um, about just how to use the manual and then also to Big Sky Senior Services. So the description of my outcome measures, I used both qualitative and quantitative uh, measures to collect and analyze the data. I completed a pretty informal needs assessment at the beginning just to see what everyone kind of needed within the community. Um, I also did a pre and post survey and then a demographic survey as well. And the pre and post surveys were conducted um, before and after the presentation that I did with the pastors and community workers um, regarding the support group manual and just how to use it. So here's the summary of the outcome. Um, so the qualitative results in the pre-survey, they identified barriers of beginning a support group were lack of participants, lack of volunteers and staff, lack of time. Um, a lot of them just couldn't even think about adding something else to their plate at this moment. And also just lack of knowledge about how to run a support group and about Alzheimer's or dementia. The post survey identified solutions were interested in joining other congregations to increase the participants and increase the volunteers. Um, also, they identified a solution as maybe beginning the support group in January um, versus trying to start one right now in the busy time of the year. And then also just becoming aware of additional ed education opportunities and supports within the community so they don't have to do this all alone. Here is the bar graphs of the um, of the quantitative results. And this is kind of cool because you can see that a lot of the questions did increase um, the participants um, before and after the presentation. So um, they were able to able to identify community res resources at a higher rate. They were identifying a need for a support group better, as well as they were more likely to look towards finding a facilitator and working with other congregations. Um, so based on the qualitative and quantitative results, there was an overall increase of knowledge, willingness to begin the work of beginning a support group, and increased ability to point people in the right direction to access community resources post-presentation. Um, there was no change in the congregations or communities currently offering caregiver support groups. So basically if they were or were not offering one beforehand, they were still not offering one. Um, and then also there was no increase or change or decrease. So that's good um, in identifying who the potential facilitator could be for their support group. Throughout the presentation, relationships began to form between um, the community members. Uh, the guests had not met prior to the presentation, and by the end, the pastors were discussing how they could join together to solve the challenges of lack of time, participants, and volunteers. Um, and since community members have a difficult time creating and implementing programs within the community, an OT could be key as they have knowledge to share regarding the whole person, information about an array of diagnoses, and even understanding the environmental modifications. Big Sky Senior Services would also like to be a resource and assist others in beginning support groups in the future. So the sustainability, the manual was created so that each section could be used as a standalone resource or for a year long uh, support group. This ensured that at least parts of the manual were sustainable moving forward. Tyler, my site mentor, um, has, will be pitching the support group manual to, to, um, to another group of people in the following weeks. And then also, like I mentioned, a few of the pastors who attended, um, they expressed interest in working together um, to begin a support group in the new year. And this project surely has the bones to be sustainable throughout the community. However, just at this time, nobody has actually agreed to begin it. So lessons learned and what I would do differently. I got to learn how nonprofit works. I got to see the ins and the outs, and it was really cool. Um, community ma matters. I grew up in a small town, and so I've always known that community ma matters, but just to really see it in the town of the sides of Billings was great. Also, the value of occupational therapy within the community. Um, I got to really see the value of how OTs can assist individuals before the need of a hospitalization or a rehab stay. And then finally, what I would do different, I would attempt to reach out um, to enlist pastors early in the process. So when I was conducting my needs assessment, I had one pastor who was really interested in gung-ho, um, but so she was going to actually pilot the support group while I was completing my capstone. However, she experienced a death. And so she needs space, space to grieve, which is totally understandable. 
Um, but I kind of quit asking other people to pilot it because I already had someone who was so excited to pilot it. Um, so maybe I would have just kept pushing towards someone else to pilot as well. The next steps is I've given all my contact information to the community members who came to the presentation and the door is always open for me to be involved in the future if my, if my schedule allows. I will also be continuing to assist Suzanne with the memory cafe and I will apply the knowledge I gained throughout these 14 weeks into my future career. Here are my references, any questions, and then finally, thank you. Um, a special thank you to Tyler and Suzanne and everyone else at Big Sky Senior Services. They were great, they were very supportive. Also to Lynn Maloney and Dan Colts, they played such a key role in the beginning of um, just creating the support group manual. Um, and then also to all the community members and pastors who took time to be a part of my journey and showed up for my presentation. And then um, hopefully we'll start one later. And thank you to all of you to listen, who are listening.